This is how to play short par four holes. Now short par four holes can be very tricky for a lot of golfers because they think they're on the PGA Tour trying to bomb it on the green as close to the green as possible all the time. Very often that's exactly what the course designer wants you to do. He wants you to screw it up by being too greedy. So what we want to do here is split this hole up into shots we like to hit. So I like to take a 340 yard hole like this and think what do I want into the green? What do I want into the green? That's what I'm thinking. I'm planning back from the cup. So I want about a 130, 140 yard shot down the breeze with like a pitching wedge. If I hit a little bit short of that, I'll have a 9 iron, that's fine. If I hit a little bit longer, I'll have a 48 degree. But because of my plan to hit a pitching wedge, I'm going to hit a 6 iron, for me, a 200 yard club down breeze. For you, it might be something else. Think in terms of what do I want into this green. Often you don't want a half wedge. Often a lot of people who play off double digit handicaps are not great at the half wedges, the 75 yard pitch shots. Pick clubs that you like to hit. Now, there's a lot of people who, out there who will talk about you know optimal golf or the data says you've got to get it as close to the hole as you can all the time whatever you know what guys you have to understand what is optimal golf for you when we're talking about getting it closer to the green all the time whatever there's a lot of stuff between you and the hole so when you go of course you're in the trouble and do you have those shots to recover to be able to make a good score often the most overlooked thing in golf is to just hit your comfortable shots Hitting one easy shot after another easy shot, avoiding the difficult shots. So I hit a beautiful shot as planned, and like I say, sometimes I'm going to hit it a bit longer, sometimes shorter. I've left myself 131 instead of the 145 I had predicted. And for me, down breeze, that's a 48 degree. Think in terms of shots you like. For me, this is a perfect 48 degree. I feel very confidential. I'm going to hit a good shot. When you're not feeling confidential, that's when you hit bad shots. That means you're hitting a difficult shot. Every time you hit a difficult shot, you leave another difficult shot. So even if it's a short par four, we, all we need is a par. Par is a great score for 99% of golfers. I mean, really, it's a great score. So let's hit this wedge and try and make a four. If we miss the green, we'll chip and putt. If we get it on the green, we two putt and we go. Okay, so we're on the front. We're gonna try for a two putt. The easiest game is your game. Now the reason I advocate for hitting comfy shots is because we've got bunkers over here, we've got bunker over there, and we have this beautiful run up here in front of the green. When you're playing your approach shots, you want a comfy shot that you can kind of control. And if that comfy shot, let's say the pin is here where it is, you've got 130 yards. Let's say you have a comfy shot that's only 120, but your next shot is slightly less comfortable. Maybe something you're gonna push in the bunker or pull in the bunker but you want to leave it short there, leave yourself a chip or a putt from the fairway, that's a great play because you know it's a comfy shot for you. Do you like chipping or putting from the fairway? I mean, who doesn't? No one likes a bunker shot. So avoid the hazards, play your game to places that you can get up and down. That way a 340 yard hole, a 320 yard hole, you're not smashing driver trying to get it on the green when your maximum shot is 230, 240. You're playing smart and you're reducing that upper limit of your score, which brings everything down. The bird dog putter is on deck. I'm not even gonna clean this golf ball, just how I roll. A little stroke on this, give us a bird ski. What a birdie, man. <laughs> now I could have hit a driver or something and pounded it over here into the bunker with some luck. Chances are I would have gone in the water there, drop two, hit three, two putt bogey. Why do that? Let's take the hazards, let's take the danger and bunkers out of play, leave ourselves shots we love to hit that are easy for you. Not my easy shot, your easy shot. The technique is clearly to chop it up. Now I've been using Kamikoto knives for over a year now. I take them everywhere I go throughout Thailand. I travel a lot and I like to cut up meat and I'd like to cook barbecues everywhere I go. And these are without a doubt the best for carving, the best for cutting up the meat before cooking and the best for veggies. I take it everywhere, but I've decided to get some more for the new year. The knives are made with Japanese steel using traditional techniques. Each knife is individually inspected and comes with a lifetime guarantee. 
the knives come in a heavy ash wood box, which makes it a perfect gift, especially with Christmas coming up. Absolutely fantastic. I have everything in life, but the best thing I ever got was this gift of Kamikoto knives. Kamikoto is running a fantastic Black Friday sale now, offering my viewers an extra $50 off by visiting the URL kamikoto.com forward slash golf sidekick for an extra $50 off. Remember to use discount code golf sidekick for your special discount. A beautiful set of knives. These Japanese steel knives are used by Michelin star chefs all around the world. Kamikoto product range features a vast array of Japanese steel knives, such as the three-piece Kanpeki knife set that comes with Nakiri, vegetable knife about seven inches long, the slicing knife eight and a half inches, and the utility knife of five inches. The Kamikoto Santoku blade is seven inches long, a single bevel kataha, among many others. All the blades and the handles have satin finish for a subtle yet stunning luster. Kamikoto.com forward slash golf sidekick and use discount code golf sidekick. Now we know what happens when I hit a 4 iron or a 6 iron off a tee. It's going to go 200 plus. Very easy, it's going to leave me a 150 something yard shot, 140 something into the screen. It's a 350 yard hole. But now, what if you don't hit it over 200? What if you hit a bad shot? What if you don't have the distance? I'm going to hit a 7 iron here and show you. There's a big thing in the way of the green there, a little water hazard. But the fairway is wide open. Let's play to a second shot so that when we have another shot that's clear and we're not in the poo-poos by hitting confidential shots. Now I strike the ball nicely. It came out the middle of the face with a 7-iron. It goes a certain distance. But what about you? Like is a mediocre hybrid a confidential shot that's going to go the same distance? Is it a 7-wood? Is it a 4-wood, 5-wood, a driver? It doesn't matter. Don't worry about what I'm hitting. Watch how I chop up the hole. It's all about how we chop up the shots. We've left that dreaded shot that people have, 175 to the pin. We're playing a bit uphill. It's probably playing 182, something like that. Now this is the decision time. Because we have to carry so much, you basically have to carry 170 yards and there's a big water hazard there. What's worse than losing golf balls? Nothing. Nothing's worse than hitting a ball in the drink, having to take a drop. So sometimes you just have to take your medicine on a hole like this, leave it short, and pitch it on. Now, we could do some crazy stuff. We could do crazy, crazy things. How much to the water? We've got about 100, 110 to the water. That's gonna leave us about a 75 yard shot. Do you have that shot? Do you like that shot? If you like a 100 yard shot, maybe you need to punch this thing 75. Let's do crazy things. I'm not gonna go for it here. I'm gonna show you two layups, one to 100 and one to the water, leaving 75, 80 yards in. 105 yards is my 56 degree. I'm very confidential with it. I'm gonna try that. Okay, so one about 80 and one about 105. We've got exactly 101 yards left. That is just perfect for this shot. A beautiful 56 degree again. But this time, just right of the pin, because I can see the green there. I can't see what's on the left. It's, it's not visible. And that way we hit a really comfy shot for our third into a short par four, but we're not losing a golf ball. Okay, on the green safely. Comfy shots. This layup we've hit to 86 yards, just one yard longer than what we wanted, about 85. Or I don't know what we wanted, but this is the partial shot that, you know, it's going to work some of the time, and other times you're just not going to have the right timing or the right distance control, which is why I don't like to hit them that much. See that? Teeth that a little bit is going to work. It's a really nice shot, but it's, you know what I mean? It's like, I teeth it and it goes well, or I teeth it and I hit it over the green, or fats it a little bit. That's why I prefer a full 105 yard shot with the sand wedge. But hey, what do you like? Hit to where you like to avoid hitting balls in the shizer. Now on a short par 4 like this, you have to know where to miss. You can't miss left here, it just drops into water. You can't stay short, it drops down into water. You've only got space up on the right side, long and right. Long and right. The right side is the easiest chip and the, the long side is on a down slope hitting onto a down slope. So you need to find where to miss. That's kind of why I aimed more toward this side 
because I know if I go left, I'm deados. Not much chipping happening there. You can come back left. You can come back left here, but that's really a tough chip as well. So this is the 85 yard shot. I mean, what's the difference? Not much, probably the angle and the slope. This one's gonna break a big time right to left. Let's have a rook. Bit of a scary putt because of the slope. Good line, just wrong strong. And then this one over here, we are more up the slope with a bit of right to left toward the end. A much easier putt, I guess. But of course, depends where you're gonna get the ball. Like the 101 yard shot, I just, I don't know why I have more control. That 85 yard shot, not good. Leaves us in a place that we didn't wanna be. Let's hope for the two putt and make the two putt. It's two fives. As long as you're getting yourself putts for pars, you're gonna do well on par fours. The big place to pack your ego away on a short par four is to understand four is still a great score. Four is never a disgrace on a short par four. How many times have you come undone by trying to be the hero, making a five, six, seven on a par four, and then afterwards, I can't believe I made a six on that par four. It's so short, it's so easy. They're not that easy because the course designer knows you. He's tempted you into doing stupid things. I am leading you away from temptation. We're on to another short par four, 350 yards. Now, I'm gonna show you two options here. You know, sometimes people get into this like super ego mode and they wanna smash something long, far, 350. You know, they can, they can get it on. They can get it on with the right wind, the right strike, but their maximum shot is 260. That is crazy. But if you can hit a 260 yard shot with ease, or 250 or 240, whatever club's gonna get you the longest with ease, to a shot that you like to hit, you should go for it. But now I'll show you two ways. I'm gonna hit a six iron, and then I'm gonna do a driver. So six iron basically, stay short of that bunker, leave a no sand approach. Just like that. So we've got approach from the grass, that's what we want. Let's say I'm feeling extra BDE. Now unfortunately with my game, the driver is my trouble club. So if I don't play for a while, this one's really difficult to get back quite correct. I'm gonna try it for you and see if I can pull something off. But chances are it's gonna be a disaster. And that's why if you have a disaster club, rather leave it in the bag. See, when I don't hit it for a while, I hit shots like that and I feel sore in the back. This one takes a lot of work. If I'm not working on it at home or at the driving range, then I bring it to the course and cause deep frustration, pain in the body. Look at that first shot with a six iron. That's what I enjoy. Stress-free, stress-free, stress-free. What a game. So my driver has gone into that deep stuff there. It's unplayable. That's why I just say to you guys, just get the ball in play. Leave yourself a second shot. Get yourself that opportunity to go and hit a par putt. You know, from there, look at that hero shot and. You know, it's a bit narrow up there with the, with the water. You know, you've got deep grass over there. That ball's gone, so, so she's gonna look for it. But here at Kirimaya, you're not finding it. 162. My lady friend has started playing golf, so we have a pink ball. She hit her drive there where I hit my six iron. How beautiful is that? Our balls are almost touching. We've got about 163 yards left. Now, 163 yards, it may seem like a long shot and you're purposefully giving yourself more to do. No, you're intentionally getting yourself in play to allow another shot. When you try to get too far up and you're not secure in yourself with that shot in the moment, that's when you give yourself trouble. But then you can say you're further up and you, you know, you're from the trouble but you have a shorter shot or whatever. But where do you hit from here when you miss the fairway? Nowhere. Over there's the long grass, over there's the water. I'm in play on the right side of the hole, giving me the second shot. So I'll hit my normal club, which is to go for the green. And then I'm going to show you the shot that I would suggest if you're not feeling confidential from 163 yards, what you can do. So I feel down breeze, the nine iron is good for me. Of course, it may be different for you. And I'll show you that. Because we've got to carry a bunker right in front of the pin there. But I know if I set this up at the opening of the green and hit it firm, I'm going to hit a slight tug on it. Just like that, and it's just left of the pin. That's a beaut. Now let's say you're not that confidential with your 9-iron like I am, or 
If you're hitting something lower lofted, it's not going to fly as high or be as confident. Now, there's a lot of space on the right there. As long as we stay short of that right-hand bunker, we have a pitch onto the green and we can make a par or a bogues at worst. So we just hit a six iron up there. We get lucky if it rolls up. If not, it means we've got a pitch. But we're hitting it to the entrance of the green where it can run up or stay short of the bunker right for a pitch onto the green. That way, there's no stress of going in the deep ass bunker left or the deep ass bunker right, giving you maybe a double bogey. Now, a lot of people may go, well, you're controlling the ball better than I can. I know I'm a lower handicap, but I'm just showing you a shot that everybody has. That little baby fade, six iron, five hybrid, whatever you have that can stay short of a bunker. It's not about the accuracy. It's about the ability to know that you're not going to go left and use your fade shot shape to stay short here to leave this pitch up the green. So I'm going to take a very simple toe down pitching wedge, try land it on the green. Hey, we might make a par. That's terrible, but you know what? We pretty much ascertained a bogey at worst. Does this rely on you to not three putt all the time? Of course it does. The whole of golf is about not three putting. And that's the, that's the long and short of it. You're going to give yourself a par chance if you play like me and have confidentiality in your irons. And you're going to see what we do with the other ball. The goal is always to have a strong short game. That was a terrible shot because I don't really do the toe down chipping as much. I'm so used to chipping at the, the Lynx courses in Scotland now. So I've got to get back to the other chipping I use off Bermuda. But this would be for a par which is a great time. You're getting putts for pars. If you're good at putting, maybe you make it. If you're okay, that's a two putt, that's a five. You didn't make a six, you didn't disgrace yourself. That's a good score. This is the ultimate ego destroying hole. And it's the one where the ego comes out the most. This is 270 yard par four. Anything 270 to 300 people are taking out the driver. They're gonna drive it. We've got water on the left, Nothing much on the right, but if you hit from the right, you're approaching the green toward water behind the green. Now, can you hit the ball 270 yards? I would say 85% of people cannot. So when they take the driver out and try to smash it on the green, they're trying to hit it harder to go another miraculous 20 to 30 yards than normal. And they lose control. Either top it, slice it, hook it. Why do that? Because you can hit your 230 or 240 yard shot and still have a 40 yard pitch, that's no problem. But you're trying to drive the green. Why not just split it into a way that you can play this hole with shots you like? I love a seven iron, I love a sand wedge or a gap wedge. That's what I'm gonna do. I'll hit one driver as well, just to show you. It's a narrow target and if you miss it, you're making a bogey. Now most people can't even fathom hitting a seven iron from the tee. I can because I love it. So that's going to leave me a wedge into the green. Absolutely beautiful. Let's go with a three wood. Beautiful strike and it's just going to go in the water. Right in the center of it. I've got to drop two and hit three from about 50 yards out because you've got to go where it last crossed the hazard. What a waste of time. So on a short par four like this, I've hit it in a nice position but when you hit your shot from the tee, always look at what's the most likely scenario. You've got a very wide fairway where I've hit the ball here. This must be about 50 yards wide. Then it narrows. Where are you going to hit your second shot from if you hit a 250 yard drive, 260? You're either going to be on the other side of this bunker, in that rough on a down slope, or in the water. Otherwise you're going to be short of the green. On the left side you have a, a nice open shot, but that's only 30% of this fairway. Anything from the right, you're hitting over the bunker with a partial wedge shot toward water. Just figure what's your best shot going to be into the green. Are you confidential hitting it partially over a bunker to stop in time on a firm green? Hey, if you are, go for it. But most of the time, look at this. We've got a, a free go at this green with a sand wedge in hand from 87 yards. My least favorite distance. So let's go over the pin with a fuller shot so we don't leave it short. 
and get a birdie putt before going home. Okay, there we go. What do you think, Tong Tong? Wow. Come on, Dragonfly, give me some good luck here, boy. Hey! What a birdie. And that's how we do it, short par fours, what the hell. Three wood into the water, pitch it on, make a double maybe. Seven iron, sandwich, birdie.